rest in winter to prepare for a vibrant spring. We're going to talk about that this morning. We, uh, we don't get as much winter here. <laughs> we don't get much at all. <laughs> Sarah's laughing at us. She came from New York. She know New York City? Upstate. Upstate, okay. Okay, okay, we're so glad you're here. We start getting spring, um, oh, sometime around February. <laughs> and, and we're just whiners. You know, we get a little bit of cold weather and, uh, oh, it's so cold. And uh, uh, my husband's family's up in um, northern Indiana and they're getting like two feet of snow. And uh, I'm, be I'm complaining because my feet are cold. So what does it mean to winter in order to thrive in spring? We're going to talk about that a few minutes, and uh, actually we've been doing that for not just a winter, but we've had almost a year of it, haven't we? In March, I think it will be a year that we've had to winter. I was thinking about something recently uh, as I was thinking of this talk. And that is that the month of December, the, the word comes from the Latin word decem. And if you know anything about Latin, you, need, you know that that's for the word 10. Well, why in the world would it be a, a 10? And it's because it was named after the, uh, with the original Roman calendar. And December was the 10th month in their calendar that began in March and the calendar ended in December. Did you know that? <laughs> Most people don't. So the period that we know of January and February was then month less period. <laughs> and the days of that time were not marked on the calendar. If we kept with the original Roman calendar then, the new year would not begin in January but in the new growth period that starts in spring and March. Interesting, huh? So January and February being a month less period makes us think of a quiet withdrawal from the outer world, drawn inward for contemplation, a dormant period of reflection, nourishment, from which we can re-enter the world when spring comes. This also aligns with the Hebrew tradition that every seven years is a sabbatical year in which one would practice Shemitah. How I love this. I, I love this when I first heard about it several years ago. I was studying earth consciousness and how we treat the earth and different practices around the world, and I found out that the, the Hebrew practice is to allow the land to rest every seventh year, and it's a healthy practice. So maybe we need to ask ourselves, can I tend to my body, my mind, my little piece of earth, given the right time to rest and reflect? These rest periods come, of course, from the Bible, and uh, God rested on the seventh day. And so many of those practices come from that. But we know how important rest is. The, uh, some animals rest all winter, don't they? We could go hibernate like the bear, and maybe f f some of us feel like we are hibernating. But we are intelligent human beings, and we have that big brain, <laughs> and we're meant to use it. And so we're not meant to lie dormant all winter, but we are meant to take times to rest and to reflect. What the world needs now is a little more love, a little more compassion, a little more caring, a little more taking time, people showing up for themselves and each other we can learn to pivot, 
to rise into our resilience over and over again. Support, grace, and encouragement. Rest. Allow ourselves to rest, regroup, reset, and be ready to join the world again with caring and love. What happens is when we give too much of ourselves, we start to give short answers, don't we? We don't show up as that humane person, that compassionate, loving person that we could be. So wintering, resting, is very important. I was also thinking this week of a story of a woman named Precious who arrived at a methadone clinic in Baltimore for healing and help. She stayed long enough that she could recover and become a new person. She was ready to start over. One day, after she had found her way back to herself, she looked out at the abused and abandoned lot across the street from the facility. This lot was filled with broken liquor bottles, used needles, baby diapers, old tires, and heaps of other trash. We've seen lots like that, haven't we, where people don't care. She saw in the brown body of Earth a space longing to be healed by light and love. And so, without any knowledge of how, she decided to raise a garden. She heard that marigolds made good flowers. She'd never seen anybody plant a flower in her life. She'd never seen anybody that cared enough to do that. Can you imagine? But she'd heard that marigolds were easy to grow. So she bought some seeds. She bought those seeds and decided if any of them grew, she'd take it as a sign. That was going to be her sign from God, that this was her thing to do. She cleared a small patch of wounded land, spread open the ground, and planted those marigold seeds. Then she prayed next to her little patch as she watched the rain and the sun come to this land. When the first marigold, marigold sprung up, she entrusted its life to the light around her, and she kept her promise. She began cleaning that lot and planting in that lot until she produced a garden and a community of people who wanted to be part of her work. Isn't that amazing? There was a lot of shade, but there was also a lot of light. There was enough light, and that's all we need, you know. She was brave enough to see it and to be it. Don't you see? We've been shown a lot of density, fear, and anger this last year or so, haven't we? Especially the last two months. The pandemic was nothing compared to the social and political unrest that we've had the last two months. I'll take the pandemic any day. At least I know what to do about that. <laughs> and by the way, that's, that's almost over. We're, we're at least seeing the remedies coming, the vaccines, so we thank God for that. So would you like to rise above the density as she did, break through the soil of the coming year, ready, refreshed, loving and kind? There's a term called wintering, and there's a book titled that, with that title. It's a book by Catherine May, Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat in Challenging Times. This wintering time has been challenging, no doubt. But maybe like me, you're noticing a new beauty in the world, a new love, 
has come over all of us, there's a beauty that's coming in all over the earth. And where does it begin? It begins with you. It begins with me. We're the flowers that God planted. Did you know that? We're God's garden. We're not going to waste another moment, are we? Being those beautiful marigolds by whining or complaining or scoffing or creating mischief. We're going to be beautiful and shine right where we are. I laughed at this. Uh, we have the slide up. Don't forget to drink water and get sun. You're basically a houseplant with complicated emotions. <laughs> Indeed, we are. <laughs> Diane Stewart posted uh, that, Diana, this week, and it was so funny. I saved it, and I knew it was going to go right along with my talk. So in the book, Wintering, May's first winter, she says as one of the many girls her age who, whose autism went undiagnosed, she spent a childhood permanently out in the cold, permanently. She suffered a major depression at the age of 17 and was diagnosed finally with Asperger's syndrome. She said, I finally saw the chance to make myself again. And because she'd been through it before, she knew what to do when challenging came, times came again in her adult life. She now says it's her duty to share some strategies. Wintering is a way to get through tough times by chilling, hibernating, healing, regrouping. She says doing these deeply unfashionable things like slowing down, letting your spare time expand, getting enough sleep, resting, might be a radical act, but it is essential. So that's what we've been doing, huh? This last year, we've been wintering. Wintering, preparing for spring. We think of spring as the season for planting when the snow melts, if you're up north, and actually have snow, little green shoots begin popping out of the ground. Farmers sow their fields and suburban growers visit the garden center. You see them in March and April. That sun comes in and we can't wait, can we? We're just so excited. I'm excited already. <laughs> However, if wild plants could talk, many of them would tell a different story. In nature, autumn is the time when seeds are sown and winter is a time for preparation. The fruit of the plant matures and whatever is not eaten by animals falls to the ground, and other seeds are carried by the wind or attached to animal fur for relocation. And most of us see squirrels digging all over the place, don't we, in the fall, hiding their nuts? <laughs> They're so clever, and then the next thing you know, they've forgotten where they were, and you see a, you see a tree growing, right? <laughs> But indeed, they are cl clever. So what appears dead is actually not. It's just disappeared from our view for a little while, only a while. So the seeds wait and wait, and they wait some more. With the warmer weather, we shed our coats, feel the cool breezes of against our skin. It's a time of happiness and joy with hopes of all the wonderful days 
we have ahead of us with the sunshine. And you know, there are many spiritual lessons we can learn from this, and that's what I'm talking about this morning, although it does make us want to go physically plant a garden, doesn't it? <laughs> These lessons that we can learn on our spiritual journey. These lessons can teach us how we can nurture the seed of our soul so that it can blossom and bloom in the perfect time. In the gardens of the world, seeds need fertile soil, water, air, and sunlight to grow. The soul is like a spiritual seed that lies dormant within us until we nurture it. And how do we do that? We first learn through some sort of miracle or synchronicity someplace in our lives that we can change our thoughts. And that's an aha moment. We, nobody told us that when we were growing up. We didn't know we could change our thoughts and change our lives. Ah, ah. That's steps that we then turn toward the light and we don't know it. But we've just taken our first step on our spiritual journey toward peace and love and hope. Then what we start learning is we can focus on the inner light and the sound of God, the voice of God, our soul experiences, and God's love. The sleeping seed of our soul is awakened. And through our connection with the current of light, we feed it. We water it. We give it sunlight to grow and expand. The current is the divine power emanating from the source that brought all creation into existence. It never berates any form of life. It celebrates it from humans to animals, to plants. It's within us. And, but we don't know that until our soul is awakened. It's right there, but we must choose it. And so as a plant needs sunlight to grow, so does our soul need to focus on the inner light. And once connected to this light, we need to concentrate on it to experience spiritual growth. Daily meditation is the daily sunlight our soul needs to grow. And you know we can combine our uh, daily meditation with some of the other things that we do physically. I didn't think of it as such, but I had been meditating for years as I was walking. When I'm walking out in the sunshine, I'm enjoying myself and it's so beautiful. It's a walking meditation. And you see, when we're meditating, and uh, many say that the, the, where we want to focus is right here, the space just above and behind, the, um, in the center of the eyes. And this while, when we're meditating or praying here, I'll say, okay, close your eyes, take a deep breath, go within, and if you will relax the focus, relax the muscles around your eyes, you will find that your focus will go exactly to that space that I'm referring to. It automatically goes there. And if you will do that long enough, it will not take long, you will see a, a lit candle, <laughs> or at least I do. You'll, you'll uh, see a candle there. But back, back to uh, talking about coming out of the winter. Once we learn to go into the silence, we need to practice it faithfully. You know, sometimes we grow impatient, don't we? When we don't see instant results, we get impatient. We've learned a lot about that this year. 
We want instant coffee, instant potatoes, instant everything. We want our computers to boot within microseconds or we get impatient. And when we're growing the inner garden of our soul, we need to tend it patiently and keep tending it day after day as you would your garden. And with patience and commitment, we're rewarded when we start seeing new growth. We'll see new sprouts of light shine through, faint whispers of the inner voice called to us. And it's not that we don't care about the outer world. We do. We care about the homeless. We care even more. We care about other people's troubles. We care about the world and that so many people seem to be in pain and angst and anger. We care about that. But you see, we, when you are on the spiritual journey and you're tending to your garden and you're watching your thoughts and your, your feelings, you rise above that. You're listening to the inner voice of God and it whispers to you, but that's not you. Rise above that and see God in this and know that good can come from this. And with enough practice, you will do that immediately. And sometimes we stumble and we get caught up in the world and the next thing you know, we've complained or we've griped to, or we're uh, uh, in, stuck in traffic. And then all you need to do, say is, back to balance, back to balance, back to center, back to center, back to harmony. Because when we're not in harmony, not only are we affecting how we're relating to the world and we're not sending out the light that we could, but we're also affecting our health. <laughs> we need to take care for many, many reasons. So with patience and commitment, we're rewarded. We'll start seeing new growth. The plants and the trees and the outer gardens of the world cannot move or act on their own. They cannot talk, so they cannot ask for what they want. They cannot walk, so they cannot go out on their own to get what they need. They're planted in one place with no ability really to communicate, move, or take action. How blessed are we? But God provides for them, you see, with sunlight, air, and water. And whether they are in a tended garden or out in the wild, God has provided for them for ages and ages. If God can provide for every blade of grass on this planet, can't we believe that God is going to provide for us? Can't we believe that light and love are acting in our world now? Can't we believe love and light are acting in our country now? Even if we can't see it? Can you believe before you see? I can. So in this time of wintering, this time that we've been given, we might call it the time between time. Let us remember who we are, why we're here, and by whose hand we came. 
We came to be examples, just as Jesus did. He came to be the light, and he said, you are a light too. Don't hide your light under a bushel. So while we're wintering, perhaps your winter is over. Maybe your winter didn't last long at all. But you can use the weekends and the evenings and whatever time you do have to rest, to relax, and to restore and come back to life stronger than ever. I said last week that there's a term that's used sometimes in the medical field called failure to thrive. And if we've had a failure to thrive, whether it's in our homes, our own bodies, our communities, or our world, we need to relook at that. And the best way we can thrive it is to treat ourselves well, feed ourselves well, get the right amount of exercise, move the body, then allow yourself to prepare. As we said when we first started this, this talk, or I said when I first started this talk, I say that sometimes we, and I guess it is we, I, God and I are talking together. <laughs> we, <laughs> as we said when we first started, <sighs> allow yourself to rest, restore, and be ready. for the next springtime of your life and the many springs going forward. I hope you'll have a wonderful week. I hope you'll enjoy the sunshine. And every time you do, think about that light that you're bringing to the world and why you're here. So shine your light brightly. Thank you for your time.